This is Pre-Calc 12, Chapter 4.3. We're going to look at something quite different. It's called composition of functions. It's where you take the output of one function and use it as the input to another function. And this can happen multiple times. An example of a composition is common in business. First of all, let's look at uh, some notation. We take the output of g of x, use that as the input to f of x. Another way to write it is to put brackets, f, a small circle, g, and x. We pronounce this as f of g of x. So, if we have a cost function for a product p, we can assign this to x. So x is the output of the cost. We use that as an input to the distribution price, and that output we set to Y. We take that and use that as the input to wholesale price, assign it to Z, take that output and use it as the input for the retail price, assign that to U, and finally we take U and use that as the input for tax, and we get V as our final price. So the way to write this is T of R of W of D of C of P. And that produces a lot of brackets, and you must make sure that every left bracket has a right bracket. So we can use the second method of writing the notation, and we just do T circle R circle W circle D circle C of P. And then we don't have as many brackets to deal with. And in general, you'll find that f of g of x does not equal g of f of x. So, here's an example. f of x is equal to x plus 3. g of x is equal to x squared minus 4. So, let's do f of g of 1. First, we'll calculate g of 1. And we have 1 going into x, 1 squared minus 4. And this equals negative 3. Now we calculate f of negative 3. This negative 3 is the input to f. So we have x, which is negative 3, plus 3. And that's 0. Now let's compute the opposite, g of f of 1. We need to compute f of 1 first. And that's 1 goes into the x, so that's 1 plus 3, and that's 4. Now we compute g of 4. We take the output of f and use it as the input to g. x is here, squared, so we have 4 squared minus 4, and that is 12. We can compute explicit functions for f of g of x and g of f of x. So use brackets, g of x plus 3. So now we substitute g of x, and that's x squared minus 4 plus 3. And simplify. So we have x squared minus 1. For g of f of x, we put brackets, f of x squared, because it's x squared, minus 4. Now we substitute x plus 3 squared minus 4. And we expand this. We get x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 4. And we simplify. We get x squared plus 6x plus 5. Okay, if we plot these two functions, we can compute f of g of 1 graphically. So we start off by g of 1. g of 1. We look at 1. We look at the curve g of x. It occurs here. The scale here is units of 2. So this is 1, 2, 3. So that's negative 3. Negative 3 is here, 
And now that's the input to F. So we need to go up to F. And we see that F of negative 3 is 0. F of G of 1 equals 0. If we take this a little bit slower, we have X as our input, so 1, and we look for the Y value. This Y value now becomes the X value for F. And then we go up to the F curve, which happens to be a line in this case, and look at the Y value. So our final value is 0. Let's do G of F of 1. So we start off with 1 and go up to the F curve, F of 1. The value is 4. This means we need to go to 4 as our X value, and then go up to the Y value of G of X. So this is G of F of 1, and that equals 12. That matches our answers computed up here, so we can do things algebraically or graphically. We can also use tables to do compositions of functions. So let's look at some examples. We have to calculate G of negative 2 first. So negative 2 is 1. Let's put a semicolon here. G of negative 2 equals 1. So this becomes our input to F. So we need to compute F of 1. And we see that's negative 1. Here, F is the innermost function. So we compute F of negative 2 first. And we go and look at the table, negative 2 is 0. This becomes our input to G. So we're looking at G of 0. And G of 0 is negative 2. Now we have F of F of negative 1. So we need F of negative 1 first. And that's equal to 1. Now we compute F of 1. And we see f of 1 is negative 1. g of f of 0. We compute the inner one first, f of 0. And we get 2. Now this 2 becomes the input to g. So g of 2. And we're looking at g of 2. That's 0. And that's how we compute compositions of functions. We do the inner one most first, use that output as the input to the next level of composition. Okay, let's look at linear inverse functions again. Using compositions, if f of g of x equals x, then we know f and g are inverses of each other. So let's look at an example. f of x is equal to 4x minus 9. g of x is equal to x plus 9 over 4. It's f of x. So f. Now we substitute g of x. 4x. Every x that occurs in the function. Minus 9. Now we substitute. g of x is x plus 9 over 4. Minus 9. Now we simplify. We can cancel out the 4s, and we get x plus 9 minus 9, and that equals x. So f and g are inverses of each other. Now, does it matter whether we use f of g of x or g of f of x? Let's try this out. We substitute f of x for x. So we have bracket f of x plus 9 all over 4. Now we substitute 4x minus 9 plus 9 all over 4. And we can simplify here. The minus 9 and the plus 9 cancel. We have 4x over 4. And that equals x. So again, f and g are inverses. So it doesn't matter 
if we compute f of g of x or g of f of x. This is not a proof, this is a demonstration. Let's look at another example. f of x is equal to 3x minus 7, g of x is equal to x plus 6 over 2. Let's compute f of g of x. We have 3 and x we replace with g of x minus 7. Now we substitute x plus 6 over 2 minus 7. Simplify. We have 3x over 2 plus 3 times 6 over 2. So that's 3 times 3. That's 9 minus 7. And we get 3x over 2 plus 2. This does not equal x. So f and g are not inverses. Let's try this with g of f of x. So we have an x. So we put brackets f of x plus 6 over 2. Now we substitute f of x. That is 3x minus 7 plus 6 over 2. Now we simplify. We have 3x over 2. And we have minus 7 plus 6, so that's negative 1 over 2. Again, this does not equal x, so f and g are not inverses. We can use the calculator for compositions of functions. Let's do f of x equals x squared minus 5. g of x equals 3x plus 1. We go to y equals. Enter x squared. x squared minus 5. Go down. 3x plus 1. Now we go to vars, and then we go to y vars. We go to function, and we select y1. Put bracket. We go to vars again, y vars, function, and y2. And bracket, and we use x as the parameter, and bracket, bracket. We can change the line type for the drawing, and let's use a thick line so we can differentiate between this parabola and line, and graph. And on the TI-83, the graphing is rather slow for composition of functions. Anyways, here we have our parabola, here we have our line, here we have our composition. And on our graph, you'll note that this is f of x, g of x, and f of g of x. And here's what it looks like on the Casio calculator. And that completes this lesson.